Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 on Monday, February 16th, 2015. I'm Dave Biddle, and we're here from our Alex Gleitman, who has the latest on the recruiting front, later in the show. Many of you have asked what Ohio State's football team is doing now. Well, they're in the midst of Mickey Marotti's winter conditioning program, and they wrapped up the second week of the six-week program last Friday with what Marotti calls the St. Valentine's Day Massacre workout. It's not open to the media, but we know from talking to players the last couple years that it is their most grueling one-day workout of the entire year. Furthermore, several players last Friday took to Twitter to express how much Marotti kicked their respective asses. Darren Lee tweeted that he couldn't see straight two hours after the workout, other guys tweeted that they couldn't feel their legs and things of that nature. So if you're wondering if Marotti was taking it a tad easy on his guys this offseason, fresh off a national championship, wonder no longer. They're working out as hard as ever with the goal of being a rare repeat national champion in college football. The players got less than 20 days off after winning the national championship. The 42-20 to win over Oregon was on January 12th, and the winter conditioning program began on February 2nd. So, again, the Buckeyes are one-third of the way through their winter conditioning program, and I look forward to getting a chance to interview the early enrollees such as Jay Sean Cornell to get their thoughts on Marathi's program and how things are going for them. Moving on to basketball, Ohio State had a tough loss at Michigan State on Saturday, 59-56. to The team now has a full week off between games and will travel to Michigan this Sunday. The Buckeyes are now 19-7 and overall and 8-5 and in the Big Ten. They are not a bubble team as far as making the NCAA tournament. They'll definitely get in. The question is how far can they go? And unfortunately, I think the Sweet 16 is probably the ceiling for this team. If I was betting, I'd say they'll win one game in the tournament and then lose in the round of 32. D'Angelo Russell at least makes this team exciting to watch at times, but when he plays poorly like he did against the Spartans on Saturday, the Buckeyes aren't going to win many games. Hopefully head coach Thad Mata can get the ship right in time for March, uh, but I'm not really optimistic right now. We'll see what happens. Moving on, now for the latest on Ohio State's football recruiting efforts in the 2016 class. Let's go out to our Alex Gleitman. Alex Gleitman here, Bucknuts Morning 5, to talk a little bit about Ohio State recruiting, specifically the class of 2016. There's been a lot of chatter. Who will be next? And, you know, as I spoke about on the front row earlier this week, Jared Guarantano out of Bergen Catholic High School in New Jersey looked like he could be that guy uh, that was going to be next. And it looks like uh, depth chart situation at Ohio State has caused a little pause there for Mr. Guarantano, uh, Torrance Gibson, Joe Burrow, added to a quarterback uh, you know, depth chart that already includes Cardell Jones, Braxton Miller, JT Barrett, and Stephen Collier. So a little bit of a logjam there. So who, who is Ohio State going to land next? And my next best is uh, Cleveland Benedictine, wide receiver, Justin Lane, teammate of Jerome Baker, uh, I, I think Lane had an excellent visit to Ohio State in January for their junior day. You know, came up to campus, took in the basketball game against Indiana. Just had an absolute great time from what I'm hearing. Very excited. It, it almost seems now like a matter of when rather than if he's going to be an Ohio State Buckeye. He's saying things. Notre Dame's and Penn State's and Michigan State's schools like that are still in the mix. But I think Justin Lane's going to be a Buckeye. Uh, another couple guys I think could be added to Ohio State's class sometime in the near future. Liam Eichenberg, offensive lineman out of St. Ignatius High School, tells me he's down to Ohio State and Notre Dame. Just took a great, you know, he was at that junior day too, had a great visit to Ohio State. Him and Ed Warren are really bo- bonded. And that was the thing I think that you had to look for with Eichenberg. He was so close with Harry Heastan from Notre Dame. That, uh, you know, that was the one thing that Notre Dame had over Ohio State, that relationship between the offensive line coach and Liam. And, and now he has that with Ed Warner. He really likes Ed Warner. He, he knows he's going to produce him, make him a winner. Uh, he's looking at depth charts, Liam is right now. But I think at the end of the day, Ohio State's going to win that one out. He'll visit Columbus one more time. He'll visit South Bend one more time. But I think uh, late spring, early summer, you could see Liam Eichenberg become a Buckeye. And then uh, the last guy, Demario McCall. Uh, another matter of when, not if. I think he's just trying to take his time, make sure he, he takes some visits to schools, uh, you know, Notre Dame's and Michigan's and, and maybe, maybe even some places down south that are starting to look at him. He's just a tremendous athlete, um, Northeast Ohio kid, and uh, I, I think he'll be a Buckeye at the end of the day. So those are three outstanding players I think Ohio State could land this spring. There should be plenty more excitement, especially leading up to the April 18th spring game, which is always a great recruiting event for Ohio State. Thank you, Alex. Good stuff as always. Hopefully for the Buckeyes' sake, Jared Guarantano realizes how quickly some of that depth can disappear at the quarterback position. 
But I can understand why Ohio State's depth chart is not helping their quarterback recruiting efforts right now. Later today, we will have some very interesting information on Ezekiel Elliott in the boarding house. Will Elliott need surgery on the fractured left wrist that he played with throughout the 2014 season? We'll have the answer in the house later today. And right now on the site, Bill Curlick has his What I Am Hearing column posted for subscribers. It includes items on Tony Alford and Tim Beck getting the job done in recruiting, and it includes an item on wide receiver K.J. Hill possibly getting a lot of playing time as a true freshman. The boarding house and all of Bill Curlick's content are for subscribers only. So if you're not a Bucknut subscriber, take advantage of our buy one month, get two months free offer. It takes you all the way through spring ball and more. One month is only $9.95, so make sure you take advantage of our buy one month, get two free months deal while it still lasts. Thanks to Alex Gleitman, and thanks to you for listening to the show. I hope you have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land. (laughs) 